Minnesota's been hit with a giant cold front in the last week or so. Most of the temperatures have been below zero. Hasn't been too good for fishing, but you know what? Today I'm out here doing a little bit of multi-species fishing. I'm gonna throw an iFish Pro tip up out with the Shiner, go for some pike and bass. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be hanging out in uh, the shack here with the heater on. Just multi-species fishing today, going for big gills, some big crappies, and I just caught a nice bass. So basically, I'm just gonna throw the iFish Pro out here now that I'm all warmed up, get set up in the shack, and uh, hopefully catch some nice fish. What I'm using right now, I'm using a noodle tip rod. This is a St. Croix Avid Glass, you can see very soft tip but still a lot of backbone and uh, having a lot of backbone in an ice rod doing this kind of fishing is key because you never know what you're going to get into you can get into a big bass a pike um, if you're fishing late at night you can get into walleye so just having the extra backbone to land a larger fish if necessary is definitely key but having that soft tip is key for detecting the light bites like i've been getting today and then as far as line, I'm just running three pound ice floral by clam. And then instead of running, you know, a jig tipped with spikes, right now I'm actually just using a tungsten jig with a small impulse plastic. So just looking at these plastics that I'm using, these are just impulse plastics. A bunch of different kinds, you can see just different colors, different sizes and everything. There's a few marks down there. I'm gonna pop the heater on high. See, I'm gonna bring my jig way up above the school here. You can see that already triggered this fish to come pretty fast. I just he slack lined me. This fish will actually probably end up. Oh, never mind, he actually just hit me right there. Let's see, another. So, what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to show you guys how, how you read a 2D sonar here for anybody that doesn't know. Basically you're watching this bar right here. So this is just the history of the graph. You can see this is my jig right here. That line that's flickering right there is actually a fish. That's just, you know, like a bubble or something floating up. So you can see how that's starting to move a little bit. So there's definitely movement that's down there. You can see if there wasn't a fish here, this would just be solid red. You can see that little green mark how it's starting to get lighter colored and, and move around a little bit so you can see this mark just popped in this is a fish you can see how that bottom's starting to develop a little bit more too so you can see how that mark is coming up towards my jig and now he's level with my jig and he's on it was a little bit smaller Let me wrapped up in a transducer Minimizing the time that you have your jig out of the water is actually a very big factor because if you get a school of big fish moving in, you want to be down there as much as you can. You don't want to be constantly putting bait on and keeping your jig out of the strike zone, especially uh, when with panfish when they move around so much in big schools. So it's definitely something to keep in mind here. Here comes another really aggressive fish. You can see that flickering right there on the screen. Sort of developing into a mark. It's very pike-like where he's just kind of sitting on the edge. Can my tip up go off, please? That'd be sick. Here comes off. Here comes a fast one. It's just very aggressive. Look like another gill. Definitely not a giant. I want something gigantic. You know what I'm saying? You drop. Look at that mark. You see that? That is a big fish, or it's just about four fish stacked on top of each other. Either way, that is a very, very developed mark. I just want to give a big shout out to Casey's for making some bomb cinnamon rolls. Well, what did you guys miss? What did you guys miss? What's going on here? I don't either. I don't know what's going on. I'm uh, I uh, <laughs> I look down at the floor and I look back on the underwater camera and there's just a dust cloud and I my jig was gone. So not too sure what's uh what's going on here. Camera though, buddy. Oh shoot. Oh, that's a nice bass. Uh oh. 
Uh oh. We've got a problem. He's stuck on the underwater camera. I think he's off now. Yeah, there he is. There we go. Oh, there's another one down there. Look at that nice bass. When I do this kind of fishing, I always get asked, how do you find a place like this where you can catch a variety of fish, decent on size, and uh, everything else? And the answer is lake maps. I'm talking about reading a lake map, finding a spot where you have number one confidence in. You need to have confidence in a spot, otherwise it's just not gonna work out. Your mindset is everything in fishing, and I can tell you that right now. Second, you wanna look for a fertile area of the lake. And what that means is I'm just looking for vegetation. If there's no vegetation, the chances of finding a good variety of fish and size of fish is very slim. The third thing is just to read lake maps. And uh, one of the easiest, most accessible ways to do this is just by the Navionics app on your smartphone. So, so to give you an idea, you can see it's got my location marked there, where I am on the lake, and you can move around. And that's that. Otherwise, if you have, say, a GPS unit, that works well too. If you can find a nice shallow bay that's, say, in this case, about 10 feet deep, generally you're gonna find fish. And I actually found a good, good chunk of weed growth here. The biggest key that I can give you is to find green weeds Green weeds are going to produce oxygen, which is, of course, going to bring in fish in the winter season. We've got a pike down there right now. Well, he wants my jig, that's for sure. Got him. That was easy. I literally pulled my jig up, and I looked back down, and there's a pike down there. I got very light line. So I'm going to make sure I don't lose him. I don't know how big he is. He doesn't look that big. Uh oh. That's not good. That's not good. I'm probably going to lose him now. Because he's in my underwater camera. Oh god. I just saw him down there. Right, underwater camera's out. My reel is acting very strange. A little little snake not super big yeah there we go little pike not a bad little fish go all right Take that back, it is a pumpkin seed. Not a pretty, pretty little fish. Oh, look at that bass. Look at that bass, see his mouth in the corner? Come on, get the bass, I want the bass. Well, that's about all the time I have for today to be out here. Uh, it's been a great day. Just lots of variety of fish, uh, some bass, pike, Nice crappies and sunnies too, so definitely a great day out on the water. If you guys have any questions about the gear I've been using, just be sure to leave me a comment. I'll get back to you uh, pretty quick. So stay tuned. We're going to be out on the ice here quite a bit now that we can drive. It makes things a lot easier instead of hauling out a sled with my camera stuff. So I think my next video will probably be trout fishing on, uh, on opener. So that's coming up here in the next week. Until then, y'all uh, catch some fish for me.